This is a quotation from another of Richard's books on Leaving the Rainbow. I remember once trying gently to amuse a six-year-old child at Christmas time by reckoning up with her how long it would take Father Christmas to go down all the chimneys in the world. The obvious possibility that her parents had been telling falsehoods never seemed to cross her mind. Huh. Well, the uh, spectacle of a grown man using statistics to trying to drive a wedge between a six well, the uh, spectacle of a grown man using statistics to trying to drive a wedge between a six year old and Santa Claus would be comical, except what Richard uh, has said in his book and what he said yesterday, and, and Dan Dennett also uh, um, says, uh, says something approving about it, is that uh, raising someone, uh, raising a child in a religious face is a form of child abuse. Uh, we have no business calling um, a four-year-old a Catholic. Of course, Richard has just abused the word, the way we use the word. Uh, he has uh, neglected to mention that when we call a four-year-old Catholic, what we mean is, is a four-year-old being raised in a Catholic family and not a, a four-year-old who understands the catechism and subscribes to Catholic dogma. Uh, and, and there's a lot of this kind of abusive language uh, that has gone on in this meeting. But <coughs> um, Richard and, and, uh, and Dan Dennett say approving things about uh, a viewpoint of, of Nick, uh, Nicholas Humphrey, I think it is, in uh, what will we teach, what, what uh, shall we tell the children. Uh, and, they, uh, and you heard Richard yesterday propose very strongly that, that uh, we try to prevent people from uh, bringing up their children in a faith. And uh, this is really scary. And I'll tell you why it's, it's so scary. Uh, I, with apologies to, uh, to Oliver Cromwell, I beseech you in the shadow of Darwin, think whose children will be taken away first. In a world where it's okay to tell other people how to indoctrinate or not indoctrinate their children, your children and mine will be taken away first. Recent studies <coughs> suggest that religiosity is substantially heritable. It shows variation in, in the, uh, the human species, and it's substantially heritable. Its heritability increases from adolescence to adulthood. That's a little bit less secure of a finding, but it's, uh, it, it suggests that re religiosity is canalized and that after you get rid of the, uh, the hormonal and environmental noise of adolescence, you, uh, you kind of revert to type. <coughs> and uh, there is uh, some evidence uh, that it reduces the risk of psychiatric illness, or at least it's associated with lower levels of psychiatric illness, which is not terribly surprising to those of us who understand religion. A lot of statistics have been thrown about <coughs> concerning uh, the, uh, the, the lack of religiosity in Europe. And th this is a chart from 2005 Eurobarometer survey. Uh, and the yellow portion, the yellow portion, it, it, it represents the people who, when you, when you ask them which of these statements come closest to your beliefs, those people said, I don't, uh, I don't even believe, it. I don't believe in any sort of God or spirit. I'm sorry, I can't read that exactly, but that's very close to it. Uh, so the people in light blue believe in some kind of spirit, uh, uh, and the people in dark blue believe in conventional ideas of God. I think that <coughs> that somewhere, uh, uh, I, would, I would hypothesize that somewhere around here, uh, you have kind of the asymptote of, of, uh, of, of human uh, 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 sort of responses after you've convinced them uh, as much as you can <coughs> that their ideas are silly. Uh, I, 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 uh, that's a hypothesis, and, uh, and unlike uh, uh, some other people, I would say we have to, t to, to study it, like Dan says, like Dan Dennett says. We have to study to find out if I'm right, that this is the asymptote. Uh, but uh, uh, such studies will not be done if we make up our minds in advance. And remember that 15% of National Academy members uh, <coughs> Uh, are believers. So if the asymptote isn't at 20 or 30 percent, uh, it's surely not much less than this. It's not going away. That, now that doesn't mean it can't be reduced. <coughs> I, think, I think it can. I would like to see the United States become more like, like France uh, or, or um, uh, other countries in Western Europe. But uh, it, it's not going away. And so what would I like to see happen? Well, 
First Russell's rule should be adopted as widely as possible. Uh, don't believe in things. Try to get, convince people not to believe in things for which there's no evidence. Second, uh, with Dan Dennett, I think that scientists should study religion and publish and teach their observations. That is, so that they find out. Third, scientists should spread the good news, which is what gospel means, <laughs> uh, about the beauty, power, value, and values of science. And I want to say that, that uh, I, I, I would associate myself with uh, the, the, the beauty and power of, uh, of Carolyn Porco's uh, presentation and, uh, and urge us all to, to do more things along those lines in communicating with the public. Um, and finally, scientists should reduce, resist the delusion that religion can be eliminated. Now getting back to uh, Steve Gould's <coughs> book, Rocks of Ages, he proposes that uh, something he calls NOMA, which is that religion and science are non-overlapping magisteria, uh, a, uh, uh, and that they should just leave each other alone, uh, and, and, uh, and that they're really both wonderful things. <coughs> I, I, this sent me to the dictionary, and the Catholic Encyclopedic Dictionary defines the church's a magisterium as the church's divinely appointed authority to teach the truths of religion. So I'm proposing a NOMA 2, uh, neither one is magisterial. And, uh, uh, you know, science is, is, uh, is really wonderful, but uh, the Galileo character in Brecht's play about him says, the aim of science is not to open the door to infinite wisdom, but to set some limit on infinite error. And uh, in, in my view, that's, that's a, a, a great definition of science. And to, to make it more explicit, it's the quite successful effort of some very clever members of the third chimpanzee, that's us, to understand and move through the world a little less bumblingly than their forebears did. Whereas religion is the partly successful effort of some strangely thoughtful members, I would say strangely, uh, again, of the same sorry species to ease the fears and yearnings that remain after science has done all that it can do. This is a quotation from what I think might be the greatest poem in the English language, uh, Sunday Morning by Wallace Stevens, and I, I commend it to, uh, to people like Carolyn Porco and uh, uh, others who, who want to start, uh, and, and, and Neil Tyson, and others who want to start a, uh, a science-based um, uh, uh, movement that's something like religion. What is divinity if it can come only in silent shadows and in dreams? Shall she not find in comforts of the sun, in pungent fruit and bright green wings, or else in any balm or beauty of the earth, things to be cherished like the thought of heaven? This is a great text for those of you who are, uh, who are interested in a, <coughs> a religion based on the beauty of uh, nature and the cosmos. <coughs> so, uh, there's a fifth answer that I want to share with you. Uh, uh, about the, uh, to the question, do you believe in God? Uh, Golda Meir, who, who uh, was Prime Minister of Israel and, and a, a socialist and an atheist, uh, was asked whether she believed in God. And she said, I believe in the Jewish people, and the Jewish people believe in God. So I'm going to, uh, to modify that and tell you, I believe in the human species, and the human species believes in God. That's uh, uh, I, not the last word on the subject, but it's a pretty good hypothesis. And I'll close with uh, another line from Darwin's letter to Asa Gray, uh, which I, th I think expresses what he really thought, and not just being polite. Uh, and I think it is what, uh, closer to what uh, w will serve us well uh, as we move through the world and communicating science to uh, religious people let each man or woman hope and believe what he or she can. Thank you.